Yes, we're hearing the man himself. Julius Randle is not being traded. So the report is no, no, no. Julius Randle not expected to be traded. He's expected to stay in the Big Apple, which I personally, I think if OG Anobi is too expensive, I think this team might be better without Julius Randle. I was talking about this with some friends last night. How, if you were to trade Julius Randle, how would you be able to even improve the team? Like, is there even an avenue to improve them? Like, are you really trading them for a Jeremy Grant or a Brandon Ingram? Does that really improve your team that much? It just doesn't make sense. Are you trading them for a Jared Allen? I don't know. So the Nets are the Knicks. The Knicks are set up for an important summer. They have some key decisions that they have to make about extensions, resigning. One of them is allegedly. He is not going to be making a decision on Julius Randle. They're not actively shopping him. The New York understands that adding a star player this summer may have may mean they have to move for Julius Randle. However, the Knicks are taking that as you know a last resort. This is not a must trade off season. Randle is extension eligible in early August. New York isn't likely to pursue an extension, but that would come with a months long trade restriction. The Knicks are prioritizing flexibility with trades as well as on, you know, trying to maintain under the tax prints into the next season. And for, for me, I get that. I think that makes a lot of sense, but to you guys, if you're a fan of the Knicks, do you, would you guys want them to go out? Julius Mandel makes $30 million. And Boyan Bogdanovich makes 19. Right there, if you package that, those two dudes, you can trade for about $40 million. Sorry, I just drank some water and the bottle popped. And we're expecting Isaiah Hardenstein to lead. So you can easily trade for Brandon Ingram by trading Julius Randle. And I don't know. I, I just feel like... Hmm... Mm. I don't know. I just I, I get it frustrated because this is a team that I don't know if they've handicapped themselves. I think a lot of the moves that they would have to do could handicap themselves. As I said, they probably want to get two way players. Paul George would be the ideal guy, and I think looking at either Jeremy Grant's or if you could pack it, yeah, a Jeremy Grant with a Matisse Thibel for Julius Randle and Boyan Bardanovich is not a bad trade. But is it really improving your team tremendously? I don't know. And then the same thing, trading Julius Randle for Brandon Ingram. Is that tremendously improving your team? Mm. I mean, first off, doing this Jeremy Grant and Matisse Thibel for Boyan Bogdanovich and Julius Randle. Now, and you bring back OG Ananobi. Now you have yourself Dante DiVincenzo, OG Ananobi, Jalen Brunson, Deuce McBride, Jeremy Grant, Matisse Thibel. Obviously, you would hope then you would be able to bring back Isaiah Harnstein, Mitchell Robinson. You now need to just go out and get an actual backup point guard. Maybe you asked in this trade for Delano Banton or something. <laughs> but I even another candidate, if they wanted Robert Williams, they could actually go Robert Williams and Matisse Thibel and Jeremy Grant. That right there is $53 million. Boyan Bogdanovich and Julius Randle's $49 million. And you're like, well, they're, then they're taking $4 million back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if they wanted Daquan Jeffries, in there if they threw him in there doquan jeffries then would bring that to about you know probably 52 million and this is a team that if you had it they would be at that point only at 146 million dollars so they would only increase by a salary cap of a million dollars so i i don't think that's the the worst deal that they could do I think that that's, there were worse deals out there for them, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. I have just thought that they've done a really, really good job of being able to maximize the what what they've been able to like maximize in terms of 
the flexibility of their contracts. I mean, this is a front office is that that's been credited for being incredibly creative when it comes to dealing with trades and contract negotiations. So it's not surprising whatsoever that they have been able to do that. Now, for the the rest of it, I think it just comes down to money. I really think that's the, the biggest thing. And I mean, I could always be wrong, but yeah, I think money is the, the thing that they're trying to figure out what's worth paying and what isn't worth paying. But yeah, that's it. Let's get to the next topic.